Hello, all of you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful people. <laughs> Welcome to a new series I'm going to do. This is something I'm just going to do in my spare time, but welcome to my internet life where I'm going to go back and show you some I guess nostalgia feeling things where I begin my journey as far as being on the internet <laughs> and what better way than to start with the web page that you would with the very first web page I ever seen. First real web page I ever interacted with because back in I guess 96, 97 when you would sign on to the internet using the dial-up connection or whatever you would be taken to your home page of your internet provider. So, um, that is what we will be looking at. It's definitely not the most interesting, but it's an essential part to the beginning of my life on the internet. So, again, the what we will be looking at is around the time period of 1997 web page so it's going to look pretty um not as flashy as today's web pages i will be using the wayback machine which is a website that archives a bunch of older websites um I'm going to use this series to do the best timeline I can from what I can remember of points just to look back on. So yeah, with that, let's hop into the actual fun part and let's take a kind of deep dive look at these website or this particular website. All right, here we are, everyone. We're on the Wayback Machine archives. I already got the website typed in. Um, you can see my mouse cursor so I can point out things on the web page. Um, we're going to go back as early as uh, June 5th, 1997. There is a says snapshot, but we'll be able to actually interact some with this snapshot. So that's what's cool about the Wayback Machine. And then let's go ahead and load this up. Hopefully. Come on. All right, here we go. So there's the timeline at the top, which for, for this purpose, I am going to leave it up just because it makes it easy access to go further and further down on the future. But yes, yeah, so we are going to start with the original, what my internet service provider was back when, uh, wherever I lived at, like, uh, shoot, 90, 96, 97, um, that would have been like, it's a long time ago, like, about 27 years or something. <laughs> But yeah, so this is bright.net. Um, this is nostalgia for me because this is a website that would pop up when you would dial onto your internet. Um, this was your home page essentially. So we're going to take a look to see just what this can provide. Complete internet service. So what we got here going on at the top, scrolling across. Bright.net is proud to have joined iBass, a system in which you connect to the internet using a local access number no matter where you travel. Thousands of ISPs, 
and or have united to better serve their customers while traveling, whether it be state to state or abroad. Click on the iPass icon to learn more about the new and exciting venture. And with that, we will take a look to see what this iPass alliance is. It's going to take you to a different page. So I'm not sure if that's the actual background or if that just was something bright.net didn't have access to the picture. Sorry, cats want to be cats. <laughs> So we'll see here. Announcement. Download the new Windows 95 dialer. Now we're getting back into the true, like, yeah, error when they're talking about Windows 95. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can't actually download anything. When you click on this, it's just going to take you to... Uh, archive page that the Wayback Machine can't find, so you can't actually download anything. Nor I don't think you would really want to. More than 160 countries. Bright.net Global Access Roaming Service now extends coverage of over 160 countries and over 500 cities. Instead of having to pay for long distance Instead of having to pay for long distance calls to connect back to us in Ohio, you can now, yes, it's an Ohio service, um, you can now enjoy local calls, call access to the internet in virtually every major city throughout the world. Our, our, blah, 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 blah. Hourly fees are as low as $3 per hour. The substantial service enhancement makes Bright.net the local ISP with the highest number of countries for global roaming access. Um, but yeah, um, we got a little copyright. 1997, bright.net, all rights reserved. Um, let me see if I can move this over a bit. I don't want to get my entire thing in, so it's going to cut off the right side a little bit. I'll move it over as I as it goes along. But yeah. We'll go back to the main page because that's what the iPass brought us to. Welcome to Bright.net, Ohio's largest ISP. Then in the old internet days, a lot of websites would have these uh, counter boxes. I even, I've even put a counter box on, I messed around with HTML in my teenage years and was able to build like web pages like this. So in there was, you could get like counters for like how many visitors visited the website. Like this one specifically says visitor, so this would tell you how many people have visited the website total. Then this one would have gave the date, which these obviously are not functioning right, since this is kind of, well, outdated. Date and time right here. And I imagine the numbers would be moving as counting the seconds or maybe counting the minutes, I don't know. Um, let's see. We're glad to have you here. We are not just another internet service provider. We are a value-added internet service provider. Okay. Our goal is to be the number one provider in Ohio. And I'm willing to bet that no one has ever heard of Bright.net. Uh, to my knowledge, they still exist today. Um... But I would imagine that they're not known for being an internet provider, though. I think that might go more so to, like, well, something like Spectrum or... I don't... yeah. Or something like that. Anyways. And we are well on our way. We offer high-speed connections with 
awesome bandwidth to the internet. Oh yeah, high speed connection. Uh, we're still talking about the dial up internet connection mainframe in this time zone. <laughs> time zone, sorry. Uh, in this time period. Free hours. Blah, blah, blah. Free hours, your first month. Five megabytes of free personal web page storage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Toll free t technical support. Awesome. Software for Windows 3. Point whatever you have. That's what the X stands for right here. And Windows 95 is supported. And Macintosh platforms is supported. Plus local dial access in almost every county in Ohio. Almost every county. <laughs> okay, so yes, I, I'm taking my time with this, but I hope you are enjoying the kind of in-depth look at just an old kind of website like this. Um, Active in the local business and technology community, Bright.net is committed to serving the individual's needs for its customers. Please read Bright.net's company overview for corporate background information. Bright.net provides comprehensive internet solutions to businesses and individuals throughout Ohio. And we got others right here. Seven Wonders of the Web in... 97. Okay, what was this website? It's seven Wonders of the Web. Or is that still a thing? Oh. So it actually directed us to a different website completely. So yeah, we're going to dig into this. Um, originally, I didn't know if I was just going to look at um, one page or if I was going to look at it through the decades or whatever but um, maybe I'll do a second part to this when we kind of do a quick view through the further decades but um, Spotline new and original sites worth a bookmark huh <clears throat> Wednesday February 18th better business Wonder if a supplier has an 800 number? Find out using the AT&T toll-free toll internet directory. Um, I don't know if these really... What? So, Monday, February 16th. Humor and the unusual. Ernie might be good, but Bert is evil. Okay, um, this is connected to something. Okay, <laughs> we have reason to believe that Bert of Sesame Street is evil. What, what kind of wormhole am I digging myself down? <laughs> and you should keep your children away from him. Here is these pages. Here in these pages are collected incriminating images and documents that prove that Bert is not the lovable, harmless geek he is so successfully makes us think he is. Okay, uh, do I really want to dig down this rabbit hole? Um, I kind of do, but uh, I might save that just for another part. Like, maybe this this is going to lead me... I, I don't even know. Let's just... Here. Uh, interview with best buddy Ernie. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make a note of this. We're going to come back to this at a later part because uh, you're not going to get this kind of thing <laughs> from modern internet <laughs> um that's awesome um i'm gonna make a note of this to actually come back to this so oh yeah uh it's 
So then, looks like the seven wonders are split up into categories on this website, like better business, information education, the bird is evil fell under humor and the unusual, which I don't know why you would want to pay attention to anything else on this list. The unusual is where it's at. <clears throat> So we got technical support. So what was going on in 97? <coughs> Sorry. Just because you have access to the internet, it's limited only but to web TV. That doesn't mean you can't have your own website. Find out how to build your own at Web TV Beginners HTML Tips. <laughs> Just to give a little... I'm not going to dive deep into this, but... Oh gosh, this page is still under construction. Sheesh, if you're going to have a tip website, you better make sh sure it's actually finished. Um, so yeah, that was not as interesting. Not as the bird is evil thing. I wonder, in the comments below, let me know if you actually remember that site because I briefly think remember coming across that web surfing back in the day. That's entertainment. Picked your favorite Spice Girl yet? Try drawing Generation Posh. What's Generation Posh? This is a site that doesn't exist anymore, but it was made using the Yahoo GeoCities. That was a popular web building site. I personally used AngelFire, um, but I know a lot of people use GeoCities too. Then we got NetCulture. Check out the home pages for real journalists at... Okay. So yeah, that was... So that was essentially like a sub kind of article on this web page for this specific day of June 5th, 1997. Um, I want to go over the general information on the website though and then maybe we'll start skipping into the future to see how these changed. Overview. Let me um, see if anything interesting. This is just a bunch of corporate mumbo, mumbo jumbo kind of stuff that they're. Oh, back when, back when we didn't actually know a lot about what the www meant at the beginning of a web address, <laughs> the World Wide Web. WWW. <laughs> Inter Internet Relay Chat, IRC. Oh gosh. Uh -huh. Then it talks about ComNet that was formed in November 1993. So, yeah, this is basically just like corporate, a uh, quick corporate breakdown of the, I guess, the company they're related with or something. I'm not really going to get into it, but it's got an announcements page too. Providing comprehensive internet solutions and unparalleled customer service. Bright.net Bright announcements and new gateways. Subscriber web pages. Bright.net is offering user web pages, web, web page storage, but you gotta remember it's only a whole five megabytes of web page stores. That was probably good in this time frame, but now that wouldn't even hold up. Would that even hold? That might hold like two, um, mp3 songs or something i don't know maybe maybe 10 i don't know <laughs> but five megabytes of storage because <laughs> well back then web pages were based a lot of just typing up words to well html code to build a website it didn't 
take a whole lot of storage to just write up like a newsletter or something you wanted to post as a web page. Um, the storage is offered free to subscribers on our Bright.net service. Check out the how to HTML. Also, check out the new list of Bright.net subs. Okay, let's go back. So then we got services. Overview of services. Bright.net Bright offers services that allow our customers to gain access to global internet resources and projected internet uh, presence in the rest of the world. Specifically, Bright.net provides the following. Network services. Um, to allow businesses, also, business, businesses of all sizes, telecommuters, and individuals to connect to the internet. Vi virtual presence allows businesses to businesses to, <laughs> to easily and affordably market their product and services to an internet audience. So yeah, this is like early day internet stuff. Um, we have support, which obviously just, well, them aren't going to show up. So, FAQs. So, what do we got in the FAQ section? Um, oh, we got a new background, making it look fancy for us. All right, so... Welcome to Bright.net. We got the little animating stars. Yeah, they went all out with this web page, let me tell you. <laughs> we hope you are enjoying the experience of the internet. For your convenience, we have included some instructional and educational pages to help you surf the World Wide Web. You want to come back in? Yeah, I know. Come on. <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, what do you mean, how are you, we doing? Please let us know what, oh, please let us know what you think of technical support. What could you, we do to help you better? Any comments and suggestions would be greatly appreciated. This is what I think. Um, uh, no, 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 Your page looks good do I I there's no way this actually works does it send oh it just brought me to the here so <laughs> no it did not work but your page looks good bright.net I applaud you <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we got the software side of things. Windows 95 software, billing information, and internet tutorial. Do they actually have a tutorial? They do have an internet tutorial. Um, the majority of these links will take you to pages outside of Bright.net system. Every effort has been made to confirm these links, but the nature of the internet makes it impossible for Bright.net Bright to guarantee the content or even the future existence of these sites. These are presented only for the convenience of the customer. Yeah, especially if you're looking at this like 30 years later. <laughs> uh, what is Bright.net? What is the internet? What is email? <laughs> what are new news groups? What is MIRC? How do I download? Yes, brightnet.net. Tutorial us with how to download things. Maybe you can teach us how to catch a virus next. What is WSFTP? Um, it did just say what FTP was on the main page. WS. That's what I'm not sure. Oh, it's just down at the bottom. My bad. 
Okay, Brad.net is a service of Comnet, so yeah, that's their big business branch, I guess. Uh, what is the Internet? The Internet is a vast worldwide network of computers and computer information. It is a self-sufficient system supported by the constant flow of information on it. No one actually owns the Internet, but Bright.net and other Internet services, service providers offer, offer customers like you access by telephone lines. We have moved past telephone lines, but thank you for letting us know. That needs to be updated a bit. <laughs> what is email? Email, short for electronic mail, <laughs> is a system for sending messages across the internet. One person types a message. The message is sent to a central mail server, then distributed distributed to the person the message is addressed to. Isn't that just fascinating how that works? <laughs> Sorry, look, I know I'm playing it for kicks. I know I'm exaggerating the um, significance, the significance of this. <laughs> but I hope you're enjoying the ride because I'm just trying to have some fun looking at this old stuff. What are news groups? A news group is a series of messages posted for public viewing on the internet. News groups are divided into, up into categories, and there are literally thousands of new groups, news groups, probably millions at this point, <laughs> available on the internet. You can set your news program to show you only the news groups you want to read. And you can post your own message message in response to any post in any news group. Freedom of speech. <laughs> MIRC, IRC for Internet Relay Chat, is your utility that allows you to carry on direct conversation across the Internet. You type small messages and send them to an audience. And they can immediately send responses back to you. So you can have an actual conversation with someone across the street or across the globe and never leave your desk. See, if it wasn't for this technology, Discord would never exist. Mind-blowing. How do I download? Download from the internet. Whether if a, whether it's a game, music, book, or whatever, it's usually just a matter of following the directions on the web page where you found what you want. There are literally millions of applications and programs that can be downloaded to your computer for free. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. It's a little bit more blurry about there being actually following directions on web page now to download stuff. Because now you got pop-up ads that want you to download this launcher that you don't need. Download the, it's actual, it's actually an advertise window that says like a download button or something to trick you to download whatever it is. So... When you're downloading things, you got to be very careful what you're looking at on the web page. Otherwise, you're going to end up clicking an add download button instead of the actual download button you're looking for for the um, thing you're downloading or looking to download. What is WW? What is WS underscore FTP? FTP for File Transfer Protocol is a system for downloading and uploading files to and from specific sites. Sometimes you won't need it, but the page will most likely tell you if you do and what file to download. Alright, so that was inter interesting. Um, Windows 95 software, I 
don't think that is it obviously they have their little contact information at the time um but yeah so if I click this it's probably gonna take me to a way back machine no we actually have a specifically kind of information about the Windows 95 software cool and it even has the old kind of Windows start button which you can actually click wonder where that's supposed to go oh it just goes back here okay this page this page contains links to websites and pages having to do with Windows 95 the information is divided into the following categories how to use the internet applications, internet glossary, uh, trouble troubleshooting tips, where to update your applications, shortcuts to make things easier. So yeah, um, it's basically like a tutorial thing. Even have some for Windows 3.1 or 3.x because I assume the X is representing to whatever version number you had of this updated early Windows 3. Point whatever but then you got some links to help you with that um if you you even got Macintosh software with the little this picture I remember seeing this picture I didn't equivalent it with Macintosh though. So, um, the majority of links, and then this is pretty much the same thing. You got Internet Relay Chat, which I'm pretty sure Internet Relay Chat or IRC existed before chat browsers were a thing. Like, I think these were like little websites that you could hop on and they would essentially be like chat rooms. Um, my introduction, introduction to chat rooms we'll talk about at a different episode in this series, but um, yeah. My history might be a little bit fuzzy about the internet though. So, I'm just trying to give you information as, uh, as it comes to me. For the status of tr troubles or scheduling outage here. Were there any outages today? So, this was updated May 29th. Now, got to remember the... Um, the specifications of this web page that I'm viewing right now was saved from June 5th, 1997. So this took place like about a week before that point at 3.30 p.m. This just goes ahead and gives you information of some out, out, some internet outages in the areas and then such. Um, I think we are almost done. You got a few, like, different ads right here. Like, obviously, these are, like, different websites. These were kind of, I guess they would kind of be the equivalent of a pop-up ad or something. Except uh, I'm willing to bet they were hard coded into the coding of the website for at this time um they're probably some kind of uh, affiliates with the web page or with bright.net i mean and then at the very very bottom which this is not true for in 2024 when we are view viewing this page um <laughs> Best when viewed with Microsoft Internet Explorer, also known as Microsoft Edge in 2024, 
which no one uses. <laughs> Click here to download. Um, I already tried this off screen, so it actually does not work. And that is bright.net as far as, um, let's see, we're about 30 minutes in. Um, we'll take a... trying to think of how I want to do this. I liked how deep dive I was breaking down this web page. So what we're probably going to do, let's see how much this actually changed in the next update, which would have been June 20th, 1997. So that's still the same. This is still the same. Where they're... So, right now, this is pretty much the same. Um, we are going to look at any more different announcements. No. So, this is only like a couple weeks. Oh, excuse me. Uh, where was that? What I want to look at is if there was any more network stat status. So, no. Okay. So then, this was last updated on June 12th, 1997. So, a little bit past the last viewing of the date of the web page we was viewing at the time. So we're going to move, not specifically, we're going to go back to the main page. We're going to continue on through the cycle as this web page grows now. So we go from June 20th to October 11th. We started updating the website a bit. Um, we now have a completely different website with a little bit more affiliation, kind of like it's growing. Um, you have this little animation at the top. Why they would use blue for the background when it's bright.net and you can't even read the net. Um, it's being surrounded by letters that spell out email. Directory, which I guess that's what they called the table of contents, I guess. Actually, these are all like the affiliates. So, one page I didn't look at was job openings, which was job openings on the previous pages. So, let's take a quick gander at that. So, ComNet job opportunities. They are looking for a Unix system administrator. Then if you click on a job, Gives you Unix specialist candidate requirements. So if you want this job, you gotta you will have the job title of Unix specialist. Location is in Ohio. Uh, skills for desired job: Unix, Perl, C, C++ coding, Windows, Oracle, Sockets. TCP backslash IP, or forward slash, my bad, uh, GUI or GUI. <laughs> experience description, skills summary, experience in TCP, IP, Unix, Sun, OS, and all internet applications. Experience in C++ and network programming using BSD sockets, API, and the Sun RPC toolkit. <clears throat> Experience with developing Windows applications and using uh, Visual C++. To send us your resume, fill out the resume submission form and email your resume to their support, uh, well, employment email. Then, there's an actual form you can fill out, 
and then resume information in the box below and then there's a big fancy submit button and to get just a little bit more look at their other job opportunities again this is October 11th 1997 when this page was kind of frozen in time for the Wayback Machine. Um, call support technician. Um, skill for desired job. TCP IP stack. Windows pop mail, which I don't know what pop is. Uh, SMTP modem troubleshooting. And then that is being dumb. Then we have basically a skill summary, which I pretty much read through before. Then we got the resume submission form, which we already viewed. So then we got an overview. So yeah, this is basically copy and pasted. This is the overview for the com.net com corporate. Then you got services and support down here, which is basically the pages we already viewed. It's just in a much kind of nicer format. I kind of wonder if the original web page stretched out this far. Like right now I have it zoomed in a little bit, so it actually stretches out farther, but there's just so much blank kind of page but they made it look a little bit more fancy so let's continue on forward we went from October to December where oh my gosh that now the page is starting to get corrupted a little bit <laughs> for bright for five megs for Bright.net users, click here for more info. Free 5 megs of web space. Sweet, I want that more info. Take me to that more info. Personal web page information. Bright.net users get 5 megs of web space for their own personal web page. Designing your web page. And then... Um, but the actual name of the file must be index.htm or index.html, which is your, normally the end of a website. Because uh, when I made some few web pages back then on AngelFire, which we might take a look at that page too at some point in this series, um, it would always end in .html for the web address. So that just kind of tells you how the website was formatted, I guess. So this is February. Uh, wait. No, it's not. That th When I clicked on this, it took me to a different web page. But So yeah, this is a bit messed up. But we'll keep going forward. February 1st, 1998, still messed up. Now we're going all the way to November. I also remember this layout briefly, um, where they didn't then move Bright.net to the top. So, uh, I have a feeling this did not look this bland originally. Like, there was probably some color right here. And some background going on, but uh, over time, just what they could save, the page just kind of tore up. Look at this check now or chat now conference room. It's down here at the bottom. Gotta love these little animations that happen. <laughs> the Weather Channel. <laughs> Any of you remember watching the Weather Channel on their cable provider? <laughs> okay, let's continue on. What is next? December 5th, 1998. Yeah, this... I think this is how the last screenshot was supposed to look like. 
because now it looks a little bit more in place. They still have the counters and such. Still hoping people will download that Microsoft Internet Explorer thing. Uh, bright.net at submit bright.net ads. Nice. Still has to be connected with iPass. And now go in. Wait, we did not hop that far. This is just uh, like six more days or something. It changed the background a little bit. Maybe so, and then in January, about a month later, 1999 is where we're at right now. Still looks the same. Then in January 25th, 1999, we start to do, again, a website kind of update where it now gives a very yahoo.com kind of vibe for news, article, news articles and stuff. We are seeing the growing of this website. And then I'm just going to continue on because... Again, I my main purpose was to search out the original website from when I first experienced. So, a lot of this is new. I don't know if uh So, now they only have call call support technician around this time. Comnet Inc wants you. Yes, you. But yeah, so, um, interesting. This was 1999. I never heard of Amazon.com in 1999. I mean, I know it started in the 90s. I just never heard of it online until, like, the way it is now. Or, like, even interesting. That is something I wasn't expecting to see. So this would have been March 2nd, 1999 when this advertisement took place. We got popular music, po classical music, video, and books. If I go to Amazon.com, Wayback Machine can't get that. So, okay. March, then to April. And now we have yet another different update for our Bright.net website. This looks like it was going to be a more, supposed to be a more detailed table of contents for our side menu. Like I bet there's supposed to be a color background or something. Okay, so uh, this was also on the previous page too. Um, April 22nd, 1999. Maybe some of you might know what this is, but now, attention email. New virus called Melissa or Mailissa running rampant through email. So let's take a look to see what kind of information they provide to protect us from this virus that's going on at this time period. There's a new email virus. The virus can affect anyone who uses Microsoft Word and if you use Outlook 97 or 98 as your email program you could be spreading it unwittingly. Un the virus is a word macro virus called Melissa or Mailissa. As it currently spreads this virus, or, or, as it currently spreads, this virus arrives in your email as a message with the subject "important message from" and the name of someone you may know. Ooh, 
The body of the message contains, here is that document you asked for. Don't show anyone else. Winky emoji face. And that's what I mean with this. If you can see it on screen, hopefully. Maybe. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Hoping you can. It's a nice big winky face. Old school winky face, I should say. <laughs> the virus uh, payload is contained in the attached Microsoft Word document. Don't open the wor that Word document with a little explanation point. <laughs> Once you do, if you use Outlook for your email, the virus will attempt to send infected messages to the top 50 names in your address book. These people may also become infected if they open the attached Word document. Because the virus lives in a visual basic that for a, the, a visual basic for applications VBA module, it can easily be moved to any other Microsoft Office product, including Excel, Access, and PowerPoint. The virus is contain the Word document, not the email message itself, so you can't rely on the email message alone as a way to know if you received the virus. <clears throat> what to do now? Don't open email attachments, even if they're from someone you know. It is perfectly safe to read the contents of the email. However, unless you are using Word as the email reader, it's the attached documents that pose a risk. Update your antivirus software. Norton Antivirus and Mac McAfee, ugh, both are kind of a virus to your computer in this stage, in age at this point. <laughs> in their own way, I should say. They protect you from viruses, but they have more pop-up ads than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> And they take up a lot of, like, computer usage, too. <laughs> Both have updates that detect Melissa, Melissa, and prevent infection. If you're using another product, check with your vendor for updates. What to do in general? I know this video is going on for pretty long. I hope you're just as fascinated in this look as I am. <laughs> like... I clicked on this because I thought it would be interesting to kind of read about this virus. So hopefully you're enjoying. <laughs> so what to do in, 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 in what to do in general? Always keep your antivirus up to date. Be careful about opening files attached to the email, even if you know the person who sent it. The new Melissa virus infects Microsoft Word documents and using Visual Basic for applications. The built-in scripting language in the Microsoft Office suit, the virus has three main actions. It infects Word and spreads to all Word documents you open. It changes some settings to ease infection. It emails itself using Microsoft Outlook masquerading as a message from you. When you open an infected Word document, Melissa spreads to your normal dot dot as in D-O-T for the second dot, document template. This is where Word start, stores your custom settings and default macros. By copying it itself into normal dot dot, Melissa ensures that your Word installation is affected and any documents or templates you create will get the virus added. Payload, as a, it's primarily payload, the virus will attempt to use Microsoft Outlook to email a copy of the affected document to up to 50 other people. When a user opens the document, an infected document, the virus first checks to see if it has done this mass emailing once before by checking the following re registry key. And we got this uh, registry key. <clears throat> If the key has a value, Melissa set to the value by blah, 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 then the mass emailing has been done previously from the current machine. The virus will 
not attempt to do the mass mailing a second time if it has already do been done from the machine. If it does not find the registry entry, the virus does the following. Open Microsoft Outlook using Mappy calls. It gets the user profile to use Microsoft Outlook. It creates a new email message to be sent to up to 50 people on your address list. Gives the email message a subject line, then blah, blah, blah. So it's basically a chain letter virus. So yeah. Gives a repair note for the McAfee website. Oh, wow. Digging deep here. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. All right, let's hop forward again. I'll cut this off once I hit an hour of actually surfing through this. We're already at like 53 minutes. I just thought that was interesting. We might actually be close to, oh, wait, we had another update. So, looks like it's having trouble loading this kind of version of the website. Right now we are uh, October 12th, 1999. So yeah, now this is the Bright.net logo. I kind of remember the whole bouncing ball thing. <clears throat> you also see the date. So I didn't have to tell you that. But let's go forward into the future to see if this loads a little bit better. Or maybe it just updates again. Okay. Did load a little better. Not completely, but a little bit better. We are now into the February 29th, 2000. Um, so I'm not going to have as... Oh, we have another Amazon... Let me move this over a bit. We have another Amazon thing. <laughs> but yeah, um, eBay. Everyone remembers how big eBay was blowing up. <laughs> In the early, this was a start of 2000. Uh, what else do we have? This is more kind of like the Yahoo page, kind of condensed down topics to look up, which that could be another rabbit hole in general. Let's move on. And we got March 1st. Um, once we get past this, I'm going to hop, hop directly to the very future because I want to go far enough to see the next website update. Let's see. It's not really changing much. Also, I do kind of miss like when the home page like like, for instance, the previous home page that I saw before this transformation. I saw a thing weren't uh, about the virus, and that was cool. That was interesting. I went down that rabbit hole. I clicked it because I wanted to know more about this ancient virus. <laughs> But now it's just kind of, here's the standard website. If you want to see anything new, start clicking on things. We're getting to the point where... Let's go. I'll jump further along. Okay, so at some point... Yeah. So yeah, somewhere, we're still in 2000, obviously, you can see the date in the corner. 
in September. Okay, it's supposed to be September, but that still says August 15th. Weird. Okay, so September 9th, we get another update to our great bright.net website. So let's see, we got little um, tabs. Does that actually switch? Okay, it does actually switch. What was the weather for uh, September 9th, 2000? Does not show. That's unfortunate. TV listings? Well, okay. I would have been interested to actually see what TV shows were being promoted around this time. So yeah, um, this is kind of, let's jump ahead a year. So then, about a year later, August 1st, 2001, we get another update to the website. Again, like I said, I still think this exists today. But now we're starting to get... So now, I'm going to do the unthinkable and just... All right, so that's, currently, okay, so this is where we cut off. Um, so if we hit home, The winner of the third and final round Cedar Point contest is Kitty Cat 9. Woo! Congratulations, Kitty Cat 9. You won the final round Cedar Point contest. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Uh, quote of the day. As up. After all is said and done, more is said than done. Okay. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. iTunes top songs for July 14th, 2008. So here we go. Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl. Coldplay, Viva La Vida. Miley Cyrus, Seven Things, <laughs> Rihanna, Disturbia, Jonas Brothers, Burning Up. So, I click on this, where will it take me? Probably iTunes. Yes, that took me to a thing way back machine can't load. So, That's awesome, though. So I think th this is where we are going to leave this off at. at. Um, was it nice was nice to visit through Bright.net. This is the very first website that I actually looked at when signing on to the Internet back when I first got Internet. So hope you enjoyed. Um, Look forward to probably the next episode. It's going to be a little bonus episode to this episode. Probably looking at the Burt is Evil website because that's just going to be fun. Um, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment, comments what your first website was that you ever visited. See if you have a good memory of that. <laughs> uh, have a great day.